Hello and welcome to Q&A, Q&A, Q&A Friday. Ooh. So yeah, this is Q&A Friday, yet again, another one. I know, I mean, blimey. This has been going on forever. This is, this is, I'm kind of surprised, to be honest, that I'm still making these because I, I don't know, I thought maybe I'd do one week, maybe a couple. Uh, I, I honestly didn't think that there'd be enough questions to keep doing them. But every week I ask if there's any questions and every week I get more questions. So... Yay, I will just continue doing it. Um, this is possibly one of my favourite ones of the week as well. Because, I don't know. It, it, it takes, it's less work. It's not that they're work for, it's not work, is it? But it's kind of a, a guide. I'm guided by the questions. Which makes me a little bit more focused. <laughs> if that's, yeah. Or let's just, yeah, let's leave it there focused so this is let me bore you to sleep my name's jason newland my website's jasonnewland.com my facebook group is jason newland's boring group uh, i made a few changes the last week but i have pretty much just reverted it all back to how it was so Everything's now as it was. I have all my recordings are available on my website. To you, not only can you download all of the recordings at one time from each individual recording, you know, because I do like four different ones. You can also stream the audio on my website. You can also stream the video as well the 10 hour video on my website and so yeah every day i do a recording i also create a video 10 hour video on youtube which is dark screen so it's like 10 seconds of an image and then it's dark screen for the rest of the 10 hours and that's without any music because youtube won't allow me to have music and that's it Everything else is back to normal. Um, yeah, so what has happened, because yesterday I was talking about how I hadn't really, well, I, I was behind with the university course. Well, I'm not behind anymore. I spent a few hours yesterday, last night, and um, a fair bit of today as well studying and yeah I feel a better now about that so that's good I was I suppose I kind of felt a little a little bit disappointed in myself because I'd gone hello darling I'd gone through all the effort of getting on the course and getting the finance sorted and um, just you know looking forward to it and kind of almost set in six years of my life based around doing the this degree and then it started and I didn't have the the motivation or the enthusiasm to even start it which I thought I would have and I didn't and I I was trying to think, well, how can I, how can I, what, what can I do? Because in the past, I probably would have just quit. I mean, going back years and years, I would have just quit and just moved on and never thought about it again. But because of the hurdles I've had to jump through to get to this, and it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity that, um, I haven't had in the past so and in some ways I'm in an ideal situation I feel a little bit blocked up <laughs> excuse me oh, that's nice isn't it um, 
it's that time of the year. You know when the when the temperature changes like dramatically uh, in in this country, it does. You go from almost a summer's day to a winter's day, like sometimes in the same day, and it's just a little bit of a shock. Although I've lived here all my life. It's still a little like a temporary shock where oh it's cold. Yes, video, I agree. Another thing is I've lost weight purposely, you know, I pop I've lost some weight uh, and I think I don't have quite as much blubber on me as I used well I don't as I used to have. Like, let's say when it was last cold, which would be, uh, I don't know, sort of April time, I guess. March, April, February, March. It's now October. So in that period, I've lost about, I'll say, an, over a stone. We could say a stone and a half, but at least a stone in weight I've lost and kept it off. I, you know, I'm not really sure where I am. I think over a stone, anyway. I'm kind of brinking on the between fourteen and a half and fifteen stone with the scales. Uh, I'm not obsessed with the weight, even though I talk about it every single time. Now, I for me, it's about. It's about health, and it's about you know. It's rather than, I just want to get rid of some of this fat. I don't don't really like it anymore. I mean, there was a time I used to look in the mirror. You know, I'd get out of the bath, look in the mirror, or the shower, uh, or I'd just stand in the bath without any water. I'd look in the mirror because it's, it's it raises me up, so I could just see myself in the mirror. You see, and. I, I mean, I do have like a more of a full length mirror, but that's closer to the door. And if I go that part of the bath, that's where the curved bit is, and I'd be very slippery. I might not be able to stand up. So I, I stand more near where the taps are, side. And but I've got a bathroom cabinet, so I can, yeah, when I'm standing up normally, I can see my chest. And my shoulders. So if I'm in the bath, I can probably see about my belly kind of part of it. And I remember, like you know, last year I'd look in there and I was the heaviest I've ever been, really. And I was like, and I used to think, yeah, well, that's sexy. And I was happy with that for years. I'm like, I look, I sometimes I catch myself and I'd, I'd have a little stirring. I'm like, oh, who's that sexy man? I realised it was me. It's like, oh, but. Recently, you know, I'm more kind of moving towards what the heck am I talking about? So yeah, I I'm going to stop. That was a weird conversation. I guess I'm I'm less like a walrus that I used than I used to be. You know, there's less blubber, so perhaps I'm feeling the cold a little bit more than I normally would, and also this is the time. This is the time when I normally shave my head. I'm not. I'm all, always many. Well, not always, but quite often, I manage to shave my head just before the temperature changes. Yes, and I'm shivering. Um, I mean, it's, I've got the window open and it's it's cool in there, but I like the air. I like the air coming in, and I don't mind being. Cool. I don't want to be cold, but I don't mind being cool. Finny shivering. It's not cold in here. I don't think. He shivers sometimes anyway, even in the summer he shivers. So I... Yeah, what was I going to say? So basically, so I've got the questions for today. Let's have a look. All the things are back to normal, uh, as per usual. Yeah, there's not really more, much more to say about that. But I caught up with the coursework. And I found a way 
to read my books, like PDF files, uh, audio books. Well, no, they're not audio books, they're just normal digital books. I found a, an app to read them to me in a proper voice, proper tempo, you know, not like robotic or anything. And it's really made a difference. Um, my way of learning is to absorb repetition and absorb and interest so they're, they're the three things so I need to keep doing things over and over again whether that's listening or rereading whatever and also do it when I'm doing something else so I can absorb it so I can actually list well what just was listening to the book the course book being read to me whilst working on my website and just embedded some audio plays into some of the pages which takes zero effort energy to do it's just remembering that the next number is one but less than the last one because I'm doing the let me boy to sleep so I'm at 1189 so the next one is 1989 88 yeah I think so yeah just because I'm doing like started at the end and working my way back and because I've been working on the website for years and it's just easy it's just, it doesn't take much effort to do it it's just cutting and pasting basically and yeah okay I'm not saying that I'm always listening to the book not listen to every word maybe sometimes I am focusing on what I'm doing but it's I'd say it's at least 80% of my attention is on the book that I'm listening to so it's not just background but even if it was background I'm still absorbing it because I'll be listening to it over and over again and that's the course book for the whole year and what I decided is just listen to it all the way through. So I am, I think I'm about a quarter of the way through it now. And I just keep listening to it. So I'll probably end up listening to the book uh, at least once every couple of days between now and June. Because it does not long, long, it's like five hours a day or four hours a day listening. And I can listen to it while I do other things. And yeah, or when I'm in bed, or laying down, having a rest. I've even been carrying the, the thing around, so the, the phone, because I've got it on the phone, you see. So I can, I was in the kitchen listening to it. I was in the bathroom, to, okay, let's, let's, let's not concentrate on that bit, but yeah, I, I'm listening to it while I'm doing other things. And so what I'll do, not this week, mm, I don't know, maybe not next week either, but soon I will look at the references from the first, every time I get a reference on the course, there's not that many I don't think, I will look at maybe getting that book as a digital book and then then I can listen to it. Uh, also, I can read it and listen to it at the same time, which uh, apparently is really good for for memory memory retaining or information retaining, whatever the correct term is. What I have noticed though is I did um, so I was going through. So I did the introduction week and I did the first week. That's all completed. And I'd already started on the introductory week anyway. And the first week ends today. So this is the end of the first week of the first module. And the way that I write is not how they write because I was just taking notes 
and they were really um, the, the sort of you know read how read our answer or whatever for example, and it was just very much more articulate than me in the way it was written. So I need to kind of uh, figure out. Well, it's just it's just, just something else to learn, because you know when I did my degree in in uh, counselling, most of it really was uh, practical. Really, most of it was practical. There, there was coursework and there was a lot of, uh, but even the studying was about. I don't know how to do the practical stuff and then the other stuff was to kind of incorporate into the practical stuff it was all about becoming a counsellor it's only the third year that was completely academic had nothing to do with the actual well it didn't have nothing to do but it wasn't about the practical at all it was all about doing because at that point I was a counsellor qualified but it was not so academic. This is a lot more, a lot more academic. Sort of right from the start. I mean, it is just all academic, to be fair. That's what it is. 100% academic. There is no practical, really. Unless you class watching a video or listening to an audio or doing a puzzle, you know, part of the online course. Maybe, is that practical, maybe? I don't know. Let's have a drink of water. So yeah, I'm quite, feeling quite pleased with myself because, what just then? got a little bit of eye strain if I'm honest though and staring at the computer and reading and um, I will need to get to the opticians and get that sorted out but uh, outside of that yeah it's good it's good 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 so let's have a look we've got Q&A Friday so let's do some questions baby what I want to what do I want to want to want to want to want to where are we? It is just no 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 no. Um, what did I I had? I had a, where was it, I just want to say thank you to Christine for your, for your um, message, thank you, appreciate that, right, okay, let's have a look, questions, where are they, oh, here we go, any questions for Q&A Friday? And there are, oh, that's weird. Oh, it's one day ago. Make sure I've got the right one. All comments. There's one, two, three, four, five. So I have a questions from Heath, Robin, Diana, Molly, Anne. I always one of us said Diana. I just want to, just want to see the Michael Jackson. Diana, oh, uh, Heath. Robin, Molly, Anne, and Diana. So, okay. Here we go. I'm just going to start at the top and work my way down. So, we have Heath asked me. Oh, it's uh, the first eviction night tonight for Big Brother. Yeah! I know. I know. I know. And then it's boxing tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Blimey. Ah, oh, yeah. 
and I can rest on Sunday. But what I'll do, because it's the boxing starts probably about, four, I don't know, there is one, two, three, five, five, six, so it's eight fights all in all. Eight, 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 I tell you, eight. So I would say, yeah, eight fights is quite a lot, isn't it? Probably start at four maybe three so what I'll try and do is maybe do a recording early in the afternoon or maybe not maybe I maybe won't do one tomorrow we'll see we'll see so Heath the question Heath has is have you ever been to Australia and or do you have any travel plans coming up and or where would you like to travel to wow okay that's three questions so have i ever been to australia no and um, the closest i got to australia was thailand and i stayed in a hotel full of australian people and all in the hotel when a bar, a hotel, whatever, it was all run by Australian people. For Australian people, really. I mean, they, they didn't they didn't turn me away when I went in there, but it is really that is their bread and butter. Um, but I mean, that's like yeah, it's not the same as going to a country, is it? But no, I'd like to, but I haven't been. And. Do I have any travel plans coming up? <sighs> no. No. No, at all. N nothing. Um, I mean, really, I went pretty much 20 years between the last holidays so based on that I'm going to be 72 before I go on holiday again I hope not I hope it's uh, get one I'd like to have a holiday something like that to look forward to I'm starting to realise that maybe in my old age that it's good to have things to look forward to not necessarily something you're excited about, but just, although that's that's pretty cool, I imagine. But something like, okay, this is going to happen. Because at the moment, really, other than like boxing and the, I mean, the, the university course and stuff, the only really thing on my, to you know, things to look forward to, if I was to look at my diary, if I had a diary, would be my dentist appointment at the end of the month. And you may not be able to tell from my voice, but when I think about that, as which I am now, I'm not actually doing cartwheels. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm like, yeah. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that because you can't look back to it because it hasn't happened yet. But I really, mm, I'd like to go on holiday. I'd like to have something planned, but I'm kind of a solitary, I guess I'm quite a solitary person anyway, but even on a holiday situation, I'm quite a solitary person. So in some ways, as much it might sound weird, being on a ferry on a cruise would suit me because although I'm a solitary traveler, I do get on pretty well with people. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a loner. I'm a loner, but I'm not. See, I don't, uh, it's hard to explain. See, I can, I could go on a cruise and probably make lots of friends and I'd never see them again and not think twice about it, really. But 
it would be but to have my own cabin and not have to live by someone else's agenda or by live I mean like just do my own thing and I've been on holiday with other people in the past and I just maybe I'm just not a sharer I'm a bit like Vinny he's not a sharer either oh man he woke me up again it was 2.30 this morning woke me up now I think it might just be because I stopped breathing or something because I got um, was it sleep apnea someone did ask me last week do I have problems sleeping I suppose I do have sleep apnea so that is kind of a problem but I can't sleep wearing a mask. I've got a mask thing, and just can't have something something on my on my something covering up my face and my mouth. Just doesn't. Just yeah. So that's another benefit of losing some weight as well. But Vinny, he wakes me up. I know he does. I know I can't. I can't technically say a hundred percent he does. But I think that's pretty much what he does. He wakes me up if I'm kind of making some weird noises, which might just be a not, not I don't necessarily need him to wake me up. But the fact that he he does it shows that he cares. And hey, I got to maybe start appreciating him a little bit more because he's protecting me, isn't he? And there's something so cute about looking at him in the dark. He looks different in the dark. I suppose most things do. But. Yeah. My punch bag, for example, looks like a scary monster. <laughs> Waiting to pounce. But it's just a punch bag. With a light on. But when the light off. It's a big hench. Monster. So Vinny, yeah, he was, I woke up and he was staring at me. But not me, I'm talking inches away from my face. I liked it. It made me jump. What the hell? What do you want? And I, I just push him away. I lay again and I just go forward back to sleep. And then he's standing on me. Right close to my face, just staring. It's like, what? That's what you want. And any time I moved, he started. It was like he wanted to play. I mean, that that might be the reason he woke me up. He wanted to play at two thirty in the morning. I, I was so tired because I didn't go to bed till blimey, probably nearly eleven o'clock, really gone half ten possibly eleven o'clock when I went to bed so I hadn't you know had a lot of sleep really so I was at that point where I just didn't want to move I was at my peak of sleepiness really because I was I would just turn over and I'd have been back asleep again but he wouldn't let me so in the end, I get up, I get up out, out of the bed, and he starts biting my ankles, well, my trousers, my tracksuit trousers, my pajamas, and I'm like, "What do you want? What is it? Do you want? Do you, are you hungry? Do you want to go out? What? What?" I nearly said, "Go out," then, but I stopped myself. So I took him in the garden and he did a wee wee. So maybe that's what he needed. And brought him back upstairs. He was happy to go back upstairs again because it was cold outside. And then he just was still, didn't want me to go back to bed. I tried to go back and he was still like jumping on me like do you want food do you want food 
So I've got some food, got some fresh water, and I don't even remember if he ate it. I think he did. And then by the time I'd done all out, being outside in the free, well, I don't know if it was freezing, but it was very cold. I was wide awake. Because I'd spent like half an hour doing all this stuff. And I just thought, ah, might as well just stay up, which I did. Had my breakfast, did some stuff for a couple of hours, and then just fell asleep on the sofa listening to some music. It was a weird thing, but I just like, well, you know what? I'm actually just didn't feel tired anymore because I couldn't be bothered. Like, what's I'm going to be getting? I normally get up about four or five anyway. So three o'clock is just an hour earlier, which is what time it was at this time. So, blessing. Oh, I found some really good music. Um background music it's like a it's just really quite nice to f go to sleep to well, not sleep but to relax to so it's quite nice anyway <sighs> back to the questions see it's all about focus I keep getting brought back to the questions because there's a purpose to this recording and that is to avoid answering the questions at any cost have you any travel plans come up? No. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, where would you like to travel to? Ah. I'd like to go on a world cruise. See, I've got this thing about cruise. I, think, I don't know if it's the idea of... I always liked, always liked big ships, like cruises, ferries, or whatever always like them I don't know why I can't swim which is not ideal but then I can't fly either so it's, it's not, not a lot of logic really on that one it's like you can't go on a boat if you can't swim yeah but I go on a plane so it's I'm thinking I'd like to go on a world cruise that would okay maybe not all at one time because that, I think that's like two years or something. Or you, I mean, you can go on year-long cruises where you visit lots of places. But I don't want to visit everywhere. And not everywhere is somewhere I want to go. But a lot of places. I quite like the idea of the security of being on a cruise and just... You don't have to get off if you don't want. If you don't feel like it, if it's uh, if you don't fancy that particular place, just uh, no, I'll stay here. Maybe. So that that seems like it'd be quite nice, but that's very very costly. Those I did I've looked them up, and so look how much of the world cruise. Come on, everyone. How much world? Cruise, world cruise, pre I say premium grand and world cruises. In fact, wait a minute, there's an offer here cruise deals and offers. Ooh, what's this one? Six results. Ah, okay, these are just small cruises. Right, I just want to look at the world cruises. Cruise destinations, man, deals. All cruise deals, life me grant. No, that's not what I want. Back. Back. World cruises. That's what I want. World cruise. 55 day. No, it's, it's, well, it's not doable, but it's not as expensive as I thought it would be. Don't know why I thought. Mind you, it's it's not cheap, but 
there's one here 55 day grand world voyage departs Fort Lauderdale Florida us arrive Singapore 2005 January the 4th and it says 55 days 9,220 pounds or is it dollars no it's pounds few itinerary so ship Zuderham that's the name of the, the ship is it Fort Lauderdale Florida uh, US arrives Singapore itinerary oh ok things Georgia uh, Cayman Islands Costa Rica Cristobal Panama uh, Panama Cam Camel oh yeah so that's that's that one so there's quite a few places then there's another one 37 day grand world voyage and this is departs Fort Lauderdale arrives Sydney in Australia that's 6,269 37 days blimey oh here we go this is one of the big ones this is one of the big ones a hundred and twenty four day grand world voyage blimey I wonder if I could take Vinny with me departs from Fort Lauderdale Florida US arrives back at Fort Lauderdale Florida US and it's I mean blimey I don't know I'm just looking trying to look at the map 124 days what's that 3, 6, 9, 12 3, 6, 9, 12 that's over 4 months that's uh, 19,589 just trying to get an idea where the but you know what I bet you it's for two t uh, that's each for a double a double cabin so if you go on your own I bet there's like some premiums that end up costing either twice that amount or maybe one and a half times that amount because I don't think they necessarily cater for one people they might do though they might it's got to be look at this 124 day grand world voyage cross wonder after wonder off your bucket list including Machu Picchu Easter Island and the Great Barrier Reef on a world cruise featuring 34 countries and territories and 6 overnight stays Wow. So yeah, that's something that'll be a blimey. It's like a dream come true, isn't it? There's quite a few different ones. There's forty seven Grand Voyage Pole to Pole. I saw a video called that once. Um Pornhub. A hundred day grand voyage pole to pole is hundred day pole to pole that doesn't make sense to me because it's from Fort Lauderdale Florida arrives in Amsterdam but I thought North Pole to South Pole that wouldn't start in Florida they'd start in the North Pole or in the South Pole mind you from the North Pole to the South Pole is it far I've never been there. I don't know. I should get a map. I guess Google Maps. Seventeen. What kind of roads there are? So that hundred days, seventeen thousand four hundred fifty-nine. Oh, look! Two thousand 
book is an even bigger one. 133 day grand voyage pole to pole. 133 day, 22,879. Let's get have a look. Where are we going here? Uh, explore historical landmarks, bustling capitals. So you go to Antarctica, South America, Europe and Canada featuring plenty of overnight stays. Dates January 25th to June the 7th. Book me up baby. Book me up. Wow. I wonder is that all inclusive though? The reason I'm asking that is you know I don't know why really. Why why would I need to know that? But I'm just wondering, is that all inclusive? Does that include your food? I mean I guess it wouldn't include drinks if someone's drinking alcohol and stuff, but I don't drink alcohol so it was not wouldn't affect me, but it yeah, I don't suppose it's gonna include that. And I'm guessing my guess is I've never been on a cruise, but I just have this little guess that you wouldn't you wouldn't they wouldn't include alcohol alcohol in the price but they might include meals and my dad's been on on cruises and they have buffets and things like that i've never really asked many questions about it but i'm guessing they've also have hotels where you can go to and pay if you want a bit of like high dining i don't know i might be wrong because uh I would hazard a fair guess, another guess, that some people that go on cruises would perhaps enjoy fine dining. I don't know. I don't know. See, from what I'm looking, sometimes these grand world voyages they go to different places. So. Yeah, it's a case of looking through which one you want to go to, what areas you want to go to. I prefer to leave from here though. Well, maybe not here, but like this country. I technically, of course, I'm going to be leaving from this country. How else would I get there? But I'm not going to suddenly vanish and appear in Florida but what I mean is I'd, I'd rather get on a ship on the ferry and not have any flights I'm not like I ain't got a huge issue with planes any. I used to but I don't anymore but I think for me I prefer just to stick to being on a ferry just generally I just it just seems more a nice I'm more about relaxed and slow I don't know if you've uh, noticed that. I'm all about slow. Take it slowly, baby. Uh, what's this other one? It is 133 day grand voyage, pole to pole. One of three. 124 day. 55 day. Okay. This is Holland America Live. Oh, of course it's because it's an American company. That's why they're, they're moving, they're starting in uh, America. That makes sense. So let's say P&O Cruises. P&O Cruises is a big company in this country. I think worldwide, but definitely. World Cruise Holidays. See, I don't know what the best cruise is. I mean, I need to speak to my dad because... He's really into all that. He's been on loads of cruises since he's retired. He that's it's not all they do, but it is. I mean, even I think he went on a cruise a couple of years ago when there wasn't a lot of cruises going. But he went just one that just went round this country, just like a a, a seven day cruise which went round the the British Isles. But he's been yeah. He's, 
done all kinds of it. We went to Russia, went to all kinds of places over the years. He actually ended up in Russia. He went to Russia on holiday. It might not have been a cruise. It might have just gone there on holiday. I can't remember. But he ended up in hospital because he had a chest infection. And he didn't... The, his insurance were refusing to pay. Like, you know, the communication was a bit off. And his insurance were refusing to, play, to pay. And I think... I might have made this up, but I think he had to pay... They wouldn't let him out. They wouldn't let him leave <laughs> until he'd paid. So I think he had to pay money to the hospital and then recoup it when he got back from the insurer, which he did get it back because that's what was the point of having holiday health insurance if if they don't help you, you know. But, yeah, it was... I must have been, I didn't find out about it until afterwards, but blimey. Auckland to Southampton. I would refer to Southampton to Auckland. Flight included. No. No. Sydney to Singapore. Isn't Singapore quite close to Sydney? I think it is. Sydney to Southampton. Brisbane to South to Singapore Brisbane to Southampton Cape Town to Southampton I prefer they have a website it just looks more exciting the way they like 155,000 nights 39 nights for 5,000 inside cabin ah inside cabin so if you want to spend time I mean why would you wouldn't want a cabin outside would you that'd be cold what if they have some cabins just like on the deck weird world cruises Cunard let's have a look at this one Cunard Cunny Special cruise, flavoursome and what? Discover a world of inimitable luxury, inspired entertainment, and flavoursome world cuisine on board a Cunard Queen, all with the added advantage of a special offer. <laughs> a special, not a special offer. Ooh. Additional on-board credit. Enjoy up to $600 additional on-board credit. I don't know. I'd rather not have to deal with all that stuff. Like, just, just have it all paid for. They must. Maybe they do have all-inclusive. I don't know. I don't have enough. I mean, I don't know. There must be some. Butlins does, I think. But Butlins isn't... I mean, it's, it's a holiday camp. It's not really the same as a cruise, but... I missed out on the whole 18 to 30 holidays. I never went... I guess that's what I mean when I said I missed out. I mean, if I did go, I'd, the I missed out part would have not made that much sense. Unless I literally missed, missed the flight. I quite like the idea of doing a cruise like that. The problem is I was never really much of a lad when I was that age. I was not really... I mean, I was... I don't know. I generally got on well with people, you know, who were enjoying themselves and stuff. So it's not like I would... Yeah, I don't know. Just that whole kind of... Yeah, maybe enjoying myself. Not being, Perhaps I've always been great at enjoying myself. Maybe it's because the things I enjoy doing are a little bit different. So I like to... 
read a good book and I like to plant some fish and eat cheese take photographs of cheese paint cheese you know just things like that I, I maybe I'm not the same as everyone else so so yeah I, in in answer to your question no I haven't been to Australia and right um Right, I've just logged log myself out, so I need to come back in. Okay. I'm back. I'm back. All comments. Where would I like to travel to? The world. That's my answer to that. I haven't really been to many places. Not really. I think it would be nice to... Yeah, I think I need structure. See, if I was to go somewhere on my own, with no structure, I wouldn't do anything, probably. And I've tested that theory and I'm correct. That is what happens. I don't do anything. So I really need structure where with as what are they called excursions excur pervert not pervert es excursions so not that I have to do because obviously you don't have to do an excursion but to have the option so then I do it and it gives a little bit of structure to what I'm doing I need structure that's I mean these podcasts give me structure if I do them the university degree course is going to give me structure having Vinny gives me structure because there's certain things I have to do every day for him um, so it's, that's kind of what I, I know it can be a little bit boring it's like all oh, every day is the same kind of but it if I don't have some kind of structure I if things don't work very well so you know when I went to Thailand I had no structure at all and I didn't do a lot the first time I did did a bit of sightseeing because I, I, I met a, a female who we got on alright I didn't like her in any kind of romantic way and didn't didn't want any involvement with that but I did quite like spending time with her and she, we basically she showed me around which was good I mean it would be better if I'd met someone that I liked that, did, that someone that was like romantically I mean but I didn't really care because I had a broken rib I had a broken rib after I think the second day of being there so I wasn't physically able to do anything um, in any kind of passionate manner so I I was happy just to sort of walk around I was, I was in pain whatever I did but just to go out go to the Buddhist temple go to visit some of the different restaurants go and just see different places get in a taxi and you know that's all right so that's what I did the first time second time I had no structure there was a bar call I went on which is like a I suppose the equivalent to an excursion I guess and that was that was good but then the next day I had a chest infection so that was the only really good day I had out there it's weird isn't it first time I go out there I have a broken rib and I end up coming home early because I was just in so much pain I couldn't go to the hospital because I couldn't afford it they charge a lot of money when you go to the hospital over there the second time I was in the hospital I was in bed for at least 10 days 
is you know it's like wow it's weird honestly it's such a weird situation I think there's something telling me that don't go there <laughs> it's the wrong place to be uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of air conditioning I'm not I'm not not that I've got anything against cool air when it's hot I like cool air but Maybe it's because I'm used to this. I, I think I could acclimatise more to a colder climate than to a warmer climate. However weird that might sound. I think I'd be okay in somewhere like... Uh, I'm trying to think of a place where it's... gets really cold. I'm not sure. Maybe somewhere in, uh, in Europe, or maybe in Greenland, Iceland. Green, I think Greenland is the cold one, isn't it? I think it gets cold, but I might be wrong there. But some of the countries in Europe, I might be better off being somewhere where not where it's cold all the time, but I love snow. I really, really love snow like more than I can express express that's express and exp that's express and explain mixed together express yeah I do love snow but I do like it when it's warm and I'm probably going to like it better next year because I'll have a better body next year because I'm working out and I'm, you know, so I probably, I might be able to walk around in a t-shirt, which I can't normally do, or I haven't been able to do for a long time. Well, I can, I can, there's no stopping me. Um, there was a petition locally to ask me not to, but generally, you know, I do have the choice. No legal charges brought against me. And I remember the, the neighbours all getting together and the police here and the police saying, it's not illegal to walk to wear a t-shirt and someone shouted out yeah but it should be look at him anyway um, so yeah I think where would I like to travel to the world the world I'd like to travel around um, parts of Europe I'd be interested in Denmark is a place I'd like to go to I don't know why there's something Denmark is calling my name a little bit um, it's the Viking in me maybe so I might be a Viking I need to check that out I might well be when I get my DNA test back I might you know you think about it this country where I live it's been invaded so many times and I'm not talking about people in boats I'm talking about like the Romans the Vikings Anglo-Saxons the French the Germans I don't know whatever just different different places that people come over here and come over here people are you know hundreds thousands of years ago whatever I would so I'm very likely to be got like Italian roots or so like from Rome or maybe even you know Thor I might change my name to Thor because if I am a Viking wow how cool would that be anyway uh, the next question is from Robin. If you could choose a superpower, what would you pick? Now, I think I might have done this question before, but the good thing is, firstly, I don't understand. I can't remember what I said. Secondly, what I said before would be different to what I say now. You can ask me the same question seven days in a row and you'll probably get 
a few different answers. Um, what I was thinking about this earlier, actually, when I was uh, out. And I think, because I'm just going through the pe some of the powers from like the X-Men and the Marvel movies, DC Comics, all that stuff. Healing. It just dawned on me what that would be the one that I would choose to heal people. And there are superpowers, some superheroes that have that power. So yeah, healing. I know it's a short answer, but it's a that's, that's what I would choose. So I'd want my power to help others. So I got I got two sides. One is to help other people. That's my nice side. Then there's the other side where I would be indestructible. I mean, ideally, whatever I was, I'd be indestructible as well. But anyway, if if I had to choose one thing. That'd be separate, but that'd be for my more more naughty side. Because or I don't know. Because I just do things. So if someone was speeding, I'd I'd cause problems for people that were breaking the law probably. Just yeah. Cause I could. So if someone was doing like sixty miles in a twenty mile thing. I just walk out in front of them, and they'd be so shook up by the whole thing that they'd probably never want to drive again. But I'd be fine because I was indestructible. I would say I'd just lie there; I wouldn't move until they drove off. But yeah, I don't know something like that. Something. But this part of me, like I want to be a vigilante. Again, it's perhaps not the nice side of me, but. But that, I think that would be something if I was ever, if I ever got to the point where I knew that that was it, you know, I didn't have long. Some people say, what would you do if you got three months or whatever? Vigilante. Sorry, that's, that's it. I would go out and I will start looking <laughs> for people to shoot. Oh dear, that's terrible. No, but in a bad, in a good way though. You know, muggers, people like that. Um, just like Death Wish, the movie. I'd, uh, yeah, I think that'd be good. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, my attitude might change in that situation, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think I'd, I've always quite fancied being a vigilante ever since I was a kid. It's watching that movie, the old, um, what did I say? Did I say First Blood? Um, what was it called? Charles Bronson. So, I forget the name of the movie. But I did, I couldn't believe, they, the fir those first two movies were the grittiest, darkest, horriblest movies I think I've ever seen. And I watched the fifth one, and it was like a comedy. The fifth, the fifth film in the series, or fourth or fifth, it was like a comedy. And he was running around and setting out booby traps for people. Like, this is just silly. What the heck? Um, Death Wish, wasn't it? Death Wish, not. What first blood? Where did I come up with first blood from? So I, yeah, I'd, that's probably not a superpower though, is it? <laughs> I, I'd like to, yeah, I don't know. I've got this little fantasy of, if I had a superpower, I'd be like, "What's that?" The, there was a soup. There was a bloke, uh, the Watchmen, and he basically was like a god. Basically, he could do anything. 
change matter, transform time. You know, it's nothing he couldn't do. Um, I forget his name in the in the movie. To be something like that, so I'd come here, maybe from another from another world or wherever, to have those powers, and I would just give everyone a chance to get on with each other. I say you all need to make peace, otherwise, that's it. And it's like get all the nations of the world, and just say look. You have a month to get peace with each other. Drop all your belief systems that are horrible, and here's a chance. And if you don't can't do it in a month, then click my fingers. <laughs> so I thought that'd be quite a good, quite a good movie if like a an alien came down and said. Uh, by the way, I created you all. So all these things that you've been doing all these years, no, I'm the creator. And I'm not happy with what I'm seeing, if I'm honest. I think it's time that we uh, close this little show down. This, little, this was just a little theatre show for my entertainment. And unfortunately, I've been busy. You know, neglected to kind of watch what you were doing, figured you'd all work it out and look after the place. And you're basically tenants and you haven't looked after the place. And you're not even getting on with each other. And where did you come up with these ideas about me? So you need to drop all your beliefs because this is what's happening. This is me. And you need to get rid of those false beliefs. Of course, they're not false, are they, in reality? Because it's made up. Because everyone's belief is true, isn't it? And for them. And everyone's got a month. So, and I would say, you don't need to worship me. You can if you want, I don't mind. I do like having my feet washed. But just, just come on, just, it's lovely having your feet washed, isn't it? I like it when he licks my feet, when Vinny licks my feet, oh, it's lovely. I thought that would make quite a good movie though, because everyone, all the different nations having to be peaceful with each other, or that would be it. And then having to drop their belief systems, now knowing that none of it, all of it was made up by humans of course it's not in reality it's all true in reality but I'm saying for this movie for the sake of science fiction and I thought it would be really cool instead of science fact I feel it would be really it could be quite a good movie to see how people would work through it these people that like their whole lives are being raised and believed a certain thing and then realised that well, that's probably everyone in the world isn't it everyone's kind of belief system would be challenged and how would people de deal with that would be I'd find it very interesting that's what I'd love to see aliens come down here Because the amount of people that would just be, oh, wait a minute. And I, I think that's one of the things about the whole Independence Day and um, human beings kind of made peace with each other to deal with. It's, it's almost like oh, we need an enemy, have to have an enemy. So to have a common enemy is almost makes, causes peace, which is a weird, weird concept, really. But then, uh, if you like, what I, one of the things I like about The Walking Dead, the TV show, is, first of all, I thought, well, there's going to be peace. All the human beings 
I've now got a common enemy, these walking zombie things. I mean, they're called different things depending on which group of people have got together. <laughs> they're the walkers. They're the crawlers. They're the creepers. They're the crunchers. They're the eaters. There's like so many different names that are there called during that show and they but what's weird in that is the humans still manage to be at war with each other it's just like wow even in a situation like that they still manage to find a way to to yes I found it fascinating So if I could choose a superpower, <laughs> what would I pick? Healing. Yeah, healing. That would be my superpower. That other thing was just a movie idea. It wasn't what I want to do. I thought I'd, you know, just thought I'd be interesting movie idea. So Diana says, uh, what is your favorite fruit? You know what? I'm going to say Banana. But from a taste perspective, probably a pear. Although, if it's cooked, it's hard to beat an apple crumble. You know, especially if it's got cloves as well, or or is that apple pie that have cloves? But yeah, an apple crumble or an apple pie. Although I do like, oh, what is it that you get in pies? Is it cranberry? Not cranberry. Um, blackberry? Blackberry. I think blackberries are my favourite. I don't eat them. What do you do with them then? No, I don't mean I don't. I just I don't. I can't remember the last time I had it, but blackberry pie. Yeah, blackberries were nice, very juicy. But I haven't had one of them for years, decades probably. But I'd say probably a lot, a nice, a lovely, nice, ripe. Yeah, really ripe a pear you know where you bite into it and it just it just squirts everywhere I like that I, I'm, I'm not so keen on the squirting everywhere bit but I do like to put my mouth into something that just squirts everywhere and fills my mouth just with juice it's just it's a bit of an indulgence I think and it's not something you can really do in public because it, it might make a mess like just all over my top and that but it is nice I mean pears when they're not like completely ripe I mean that might be when they're overripe there but when they're kind of still hard they still taste nice but yeah I prefer it when they're kind of not not soggy but soggy inside not soggy inside but just wet yeah, dripping, not dripping. They start to drip once once you kind of get your mouth around it. It drips, but not when you're actually before it's obviously it's it's dry before that. But for the overall, a banana. Yeah, probably a banana. I'd say if you're going to go, ha what what fruit have I spent my most time with? That's gonna, that's just a weird way to say, it, isn't it? What what fruit have you spent your most time with? No, I mean what what fruit I've bought, purchased, eaten the most of would be a banana. I mean bananas are alright with fritters. Banana fritters, the fried with batter on top, that's quite nice. You can tell I don't eat sugar anymore. I'm actually getting a little bit of a just thinking about nice tasting food I'm getting a bit not a stiffy but I'm just it's like I'm getting a bit 
to, you know, not just like, oh, I could definitely, could definitely eat something that tastes nice. I haven't eaten anything that tastes nice in months, really. Okay, I've had some pizzas and, but I haven't any, I haven't had any much in the way of like sugary, cakey stuff. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, anyway, so yeah, bananas, I'd say. I've been a banana eater for a long time. I am pretty much just a little monkey. A little monkey, I love a banana. I don't like them when they're too soggy, and I don't like them when they're too hard. I'm not one of those weird people that freeze them. But I do, yeah, I do. If I ever done anything with a frozen banana, I don't think so. I froze a, a curly whirly, but I won't do that again because that broke my tooth. So thanks, Diana. I hope that that answered your question. You know, I'm, one of my aunties actually. My nan told me she slipped on a banana skin and broke her leg. My honour. Like, she slipped on a banana skin. Something that you'd see in a, an old movie. And I was like, it's bad, but it's like funny. But bad. So, obviously, it's, it's not good to hear that someone that you remember your family's broken their leg, obviously. But she slipped on a banana skin. I mean, that's just something that's just. Well. I found out five years after my nanny had passed I found out by talking to my auntie that she didn't slip on a banana skin she did break her leg but it was a completely different situation she didn't slip on a banana my nan <laughs> my nan made it up so she told she told me like I, d I didn't even know that she did stuff like that what else did she make up so she's telling me that the truth that she did break her leg. This is her daughter, <laughs> and I mean this. I mean we're talking, blimey, probably fifteen years ago, maybe even longer. So it's quite a lot. No, blimey, she's been gone for ten years, maybe even twenty years ago. 15 years ago probably 15 years ago and my nan like yeah she did break her leg but she added the slipping on a banana skin that is cheeky isn't it that's like wow so yeah I, that was like what else has she told did she tell me what other lies <laughs> I mean that does sound like something that I might say to someone you know, yellow slipped, but on a banana skin. But I don't know, is it? So, the second from last question is from Molly. 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 Molly, 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 Molly. What is your middle name? And do you have a follow up for your blood sugar levels coming up? Thanks, Molly. Um, I did actually have a follow-up for the sh blood sugar levels. I don't know if you heard that one. This was wasn't long ago, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, and my blood sugar levels had reduced to being not perfect. To be fair, but a lot better. So I'm no longer pre-diabetic as much as anybody that doesn't have diabetes is pre-diabetic kind of non -di I'm I'm now non-diabetic but I was yeah it's something that needs to be done um I do my high my cholesterol levels lower but it's still too high my blood pressure was perfect but then then you then you delve a little bit more into it and it's like it's good for your age 
so that's always that taken into consideration, which is a little bit, hmm. Because if I was 30, my blood pressure would be a problem. But I'm not 30. So I need, I want to, yeah, I found out that my, what was it, my heart, is it my heart? I think it's 62 years old. So I'm 12 years younger than my heart, which is a little bit of a worry based upon all the different tests they did. So, yeah, that's not necessarily a good thing. Well, it's never going to be a good thing, isn't it? Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, is it, really? It's, it's, there's no good part of that. I did say, can I reduce it? And it's, this is all based upon... It's all based upon statistics and BMI and cholesterol level and... Uh, all of those things and they put a, like an age on your heart and I could yeah so I can an age they are oh, blimey even I've got it written down even gives you like um, the risk of stuff and yeah so yeah, it's, it was good from that perspective, but I do the next follow up because they they said, well, I can go on statins to reduce my cholesterol, or I can try and do it myself. And I said, well, I've already have reduced it. They said, yeah, but it still needs to be reduced more. So I said, okay, I'll do it myself because I don't want to be on statins. I've got enough medication for the mental health stuff side of things so I prefer to try and get it down myself which I am working on and I've got to go back in six months to get retested blood tests all that stuff and uh, hopefully I'll be in a better position the thing is with the losing weight bit because I've been doing weights every day I've been weight training three or four times a day I I might have put some weight on as well as lost weight so I might have lost some fat but I put some muscle on it's kind of hard to tell because I'm not slim if I was slim I could say yeah I clearly uh, my weight hasn't gone down but I'm clearly slimmer I am slimmer slim ugh, but I'm not slim I'm not slim it's a simple fact so there's still a fair bit to do fair, a fair bit to to work on but as I as I work on that hopefully my cholesterol levels will reduce which will in turn then reduce other stuff as well so thank you for that mole um hope you're doing okay and the next question the last question is from Anne. how is school going um yeah i can't feel i kind of mentioned that at the beginning so yeah it's really it wasn't going so well because i was doing everything to avoid doing it but now i've kind of Something's changed inside me. I'm all up to date. Oh, blimey, I'm tired. All up to date and feeling a lot more positive about it now. I mean, it's an old cliche, but this is definitely not a sprint. Yeah, it's a six year degree. So. Uh, you know, I think I just need to be, or learn to need need to learn to be more patient and take my time. Do what needs to be done, but also just and try and enjoy it. I mean, there's no other, there's no real reason I'm doing it 
other than because I want to. It's not like there's a career at the end of it or anything like that. Or if there is a career, it'll be a seven year career. Because, you know what I mean? So what, I'll be 60 when I finish the, the, the degree course. The, 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 the degree course? No, just the degree course. But what's the, 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 the degree course? Don't make fun of my speech. And that's it, really. So thank you. And um, yeah, I kind of. I didn't preempt your question, but I just ended up talking about it right at the beginning. Uh, I didn't look at the questions. I noticed the superpower. Why? Which was from like yesterday, I think. And I was just thinking about that because there's a little part of me would like to be mischievous, but there's also a part of me, a much larger part of me, would like to help people. But there is a part would like to be mischievous as well. He's been fast asleep nearly the whole time I've done this recording. And you know how easy it is to make, to edit this. When there's been no interruptions, no one on the door, no one knock on the door, no one in the garden. There's been no, um, the phone is not rung. And as far as I remember, he hasn't barked at all throughout the whole recording. Now, I don't know how long we've been talking for, probably... I don't know. I genuinely don't know. An hour, maybe. So, he, he's been a good boy. He's been a very good boy. Very good boy. Haven't you, Vinny? So what I do now is... I might not wait till tomorrow to edit it. I might just edit it this afternoon and upload it. I'm just thinking about tomorrow. I've got quite a big day. Well, not big, big with the boxing and everything. Once the boxing starts, I can't really do much else but watch it. I could do a little bit of website stuff, you know, if it's a fight that I'm not interested in. But really it's about watching it and then when I get a break doing what I need to do like eating or taking this one out and stuff this one this little monkey this little angel it's really weird though but the way he's laying cuddle up to me he didn't do that for the first for over a year of living here literally for over a year I would say he's only been doing it for the last six months, but I lose track of time. But even then, he did it, and as soon he did, he'd lay down, as soon as I touched him, he'd get up, or it'd allow me to like put my arm in it, um, hand on him and stuff, but as soon as I moved my hand, it'd jump off. And then he started getting comfortable with me moving my hand, hand and like stroking him while he was laying down next to me cuddled up but then he'd fall asleep and then if he woke up and he'd like to see my hand on him or he'd, he'd jump up now nothing once he's laid down I can play with his ears I can stroke him he doesn't care if he's awake or he's asleep doesn't affect him at all so he's gone from it's really weird it's Never used to do this for a long time of having him. It always it, the closest he'd get to me would be when he was on the the leg rest. He's always been on it. He's always loved the leg rest. So he would cuddle up to my legs and he'd rest his he'd rest his uh, jaw or his chin on my leg, my, on my chin. My chin, my shin. He'd rest his jaw on my chin. That would be weird. On my shin. But now, this is a lot more comfortable because this is where the chair is. And 
it cuddled right up to me, to my body, into my leg, top of my leg and sort of my hips area. And I've just been stroking him and for the last whatever period it's been. Sometimes I don't even notice he's doing it. Like I'll be doing this or I'll be watching TV or whatever. And I realise he's cuddled up to me and I didn't even notice he was doing it. Didn't even notice he'd done it. That's how often he does it now. So that's me done. I think I've, I've talked a little bit about and I've answered the questions I think. Um, and Anne I did answer you although I didn't go in depth right now with your question I did answer it quite in depth I think at the beginning of the call of the call of the podcast so I'm going to go thank you for listening my stomach's churning which means I need to eat so thanks for listening please remember to be kind to yourself be gentle with yourself because you do deserve to be happy lots of love bye relax in a more deep and meaningful way Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here. Not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue the longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I'll just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening and it'll 
I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself, because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so, each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do which you may not realize by listening is when I record these recordings now, for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. 
I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, then maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands. I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is it snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes
it's almost like that additional muscle relaxation so this allows you to breathe easier without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally You breathe so very easily and smoothly. I imagine my breathing improving when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to Visualize a beautiful field with trees and flowers. Producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. So 
so deeply peaceful. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. completely free noticing that Your mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy the physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs
deeply. All the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms, in shoulders, Deepen in each part of your body, further and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, the feelings in your wrists muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling Peaceful. Deeply. There's a sense of peace. spreads through your very core. Even when you focus on your mind, your mind becomes even slower. Relax 
relaxing. Very slow. Your stomach. Peaceful in your stomach, your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your 
elbows. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Drifting. Mind. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more.
Enjoy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice forehead and your eyes. So loose. Noticing a sense of 
complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace.
total peace. Letting go. body body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and 
and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice. You give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day. Take a break from your life as it is. And to give yourself a rest. Giving yourself permission to take some time off. And to allow your body to relax. And allow your mind to slow down. Which in turn. Releases the tension. Any stresses that you had in your body. It's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling a positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort. And all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort, and relaxation, calmness, which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind. Almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together. Almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness. And it feels nice really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body 
you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come now I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead just being aware of the feelings of your forehead and any background sounds like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon can just allow you to feel even more relaxed just means you're in the moment this isn't this isn't a sterile environment this is the world I live in the countryside so there's lots of nature sounds around so as you focus on your forehead just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body moving down to your eyes focusing on your eyes noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy yet so light at the same time and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely moving your focus down to your mouth your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums and the whole of your mouth relaxing calm and loose as you focus now on your jaw not just part of your jaw near your mouth or your chin but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears that whole of your jaw feeling more in on your neck the front of your neck and your throat relaxing and loose and calm the sides of your neck the right and left side of your neck Relaxed and loose and calm. And now the back of your neck. Focus. 
focus in on the back of your neck. Letting go of any tension that may have been there before and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release that you can experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. Down to your lower back. As you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. And as those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back. The top of your back, the middle and your lower back. And as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other, separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This spreads into your hips down your lower back into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks. And all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area. Start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose, they're already feeling calm, and they're feeling 
these muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. so soft and gentle, so smooth, and calm, and the feeling shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also relaxing bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread Forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focusing now on 
a sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, muscles in your thighs your knees so relaxed
muscles and just shins completely go of everything so I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1 You can imagine, in a way, it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Twenty. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
Seven. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. 
your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one right now.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like you're counting down from 10 to 1 
do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy? Just because you're counting down? You could try it again. But this time, I'll go a bit slower. This time, as you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down and just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. Allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And 
as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. gives you that distance, that space, now, ten, nine, Seven, six, Three. How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on your legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focus in on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. And it may, it may seem sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I sure that I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something? Well, it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise, I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, the shins, 
and your calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. There to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy. Because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. It's all this stuff that's inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. You could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. doing the same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles in the bones and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles, the strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs. It's so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are, truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight Regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight for these little ankles. Now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone. Double that. Yet my ankles support my body all the time. Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go whew, and my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know the talk about, talking about your legs is probably possibly among the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely can relax and because the legs are so such a most you know very important part of your body when you relax your legs the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. down from 10 down to 1 and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed 10 9 8 7 So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One and as you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax, and a more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each muscle.
nosso. In your body. Effortlessly. And just observing. the sensation of letting go. Completely. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. Notice your mind calming down more with each number that you hear me say. Naturally feeling calm and slow and peaceful. Two. slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation As you focus on your mind, you may notice that the 
there's some thoughts still there. Maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. So what you can do is Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. You just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just melt away and relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more in with number seven.
Imagine now, notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands, your fingers, there's nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your mind feels. that your mind is starting to drift. Focusing just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands fingers, becoming even more relaxing with each number you hear going down from eight 
starting with number eight. Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. And everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worrying and overthinking and anxiety. Generally thinking about stuff. Can you 
you take that away, which is what we do, what we're doing now, you're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes to you very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to please anybody else, ever, a place where you can actually not just love yourself, but in some ways more importantly, you can like yourself, appreciate who you are. sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins, traveling to each and every single part of your body. start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer 
have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you you're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to even stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. And the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep. The deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep, but it's our birthright, it's part of our DNA, and sometimes as we get older in life, Perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely is not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. very, very easy. 
easy to let go because that's all it is it's just deciding to let go and when you press the play button on my recordings you have given permission for my voice to relax you when you press that play button you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive only a positive way opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends those changes within you that continue to flourish and grow transforming your life in a positive beautiful way Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness just feels so nice it's such a healthy place to be Positivity grows within you each and every day, moving forward, you're going to find that you're more relaxed physically. in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity because from now on your mind rejects negativity from now on you're going to start noticing when negativity arises and you can just say stop stop and that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. 
stop. Negativity would disappear. And as you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel calm, with all that healing energy spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't it doesn't des- doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. makes room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Feels nice, doesn't it? To just let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep with every number you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. Now, twenty. Eight. 
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. To give yourself permission to take a break, from everything, and you're the only person that can make that decision, you're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with how you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. which actually calms your mind. And when your mind calms down, your body relaxes. started to focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles, all of the fat, all of everything, every hair on your body is filled with that healing energy. filled with that healing energy, the feeling of comfort, of relaxation, increases. starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy, because it's not needed, and it may start to drift, That's what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. drift off to sleep, if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on a different part of your body. And you may find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. And get you alert again to my voice focusing different part of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. sleep, and that's the last you remember until you wake up, and in no time when you experience the right amount of sleep for you, everything you do, and if you do, sleep, it's extremely pleasant, so relaxing, so deep, human sleep, and it feels so nice. Feel that human energy spreading through you, relaxing you so deeply. Relaxing you so, so deeply. 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Focusing on your fingers, maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. you focus on both of your hands now, then they seem to just melt into one. Where does your right hand start and your left hand end? Almost as if Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows. sensations in your your ankles
to sin. Letting go. Letting go. Letting. go letting go letting start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well. So there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session. So none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I'm going to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just Holding them there very gently. Maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face. Just so you can feel my hands. So you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently... Let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can 
and feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe and it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. both hands. Now this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently Moving from the bottom of your neck, which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. And you decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there. And it can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you and while it still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly at the same time. Pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hand. Just turning the hand gently. Stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was I'm going to do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. So comforting. Now just rest your left arm back down. Massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top, starting again where we were the BFB, that area at the top in between your shoulders, near your neck. Going back, massaging that area again. This time moving downwards. Making a downward stroke to the middle of your back. Working from the outside inwards. So massaging the your back but the the outsides of your back. where your arms would maybe rest against almost the part that connects your front to your back and just massaging down Firmly, but gently, as firm as you want. Moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again. Being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose. And eventually we get to the spine. We can massage the muscles on either side of your spine from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. You can 
do that a few times. Sometimes we can choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yet lots there to massage, Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part of your lower back kneading and massaging from your sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. It feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's being stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to your top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
here, your upper back, put my hands forward over and massive massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue, uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. So it's all connected, the chest and the back connect together. I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from your side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine and then I'll move down a bit and I'll continue up the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing down, including your lower, your middle of your back. Now I'm going to go to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs. Starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. That's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint. It's a very sensitive, gentle area. And working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose, using both hands, your fingers digging deep. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet and 
gently but firm enough so that tickle and just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet the bottoms of your feet the sides your arches your heel you can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle Stretching your toes gently. Massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers. Each one individually. Moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down. This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down muscles massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently moving down your ankle into your feet massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure and release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really good. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again with your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As we move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Gently. Starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows. Just 
just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down the cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, chin, moving down from your neck down to your chest starting by massaging the very top of your chest where the collarbone is either side of the collarbone Just massaging the whole of the chest. Moving the chest around. Because it's quite a large area, you can move from one side to the next. Moving my hands from underneath pretty much where your arms are, stretching up, stretching some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, and just below your arms. All the way down to your hips. Now moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. And we're going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your 
ribs all the way down to below your belly button. to the other side of you and repeat that process of relaxing deeply calmly you feel loose you feel free and there's something about having your stomach massaged it's different from any other part because we do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in our stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach circles around your belly button and going the other way around there's a gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them. I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down, massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. down to your knees, gently massaging the knees, sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin, gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, Stroking the tops of your feet. And then with each foot in each hand, just gently massaging the whole of the foot. The top, the bottom, your heel. Massaging every part of your feet. Feels so good just to let go. Enjoy the process. Enjoy. comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. And you can just lie there for as long as you choose. Enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deep.
do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred candles. You're going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically gently blow that candle out. Just, this is not a big blow, it's just a gentle, and that candle will extinguish. And then I'll say the next number as we move down, and you can just Blow that one out as well. And as we move down the numbers, you'll find yourself feeling more and more relaxed. If you need to sleep, you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy. In fact, you may struggle to blow out all 100 of these candles. As you really feel to me after a while and even though there may be background sounds where you are you be aware of those sounds just not even notice them at all because they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds the pigeon 
likes to say hello sometimes. And as your plane goes by, seems important whatsoever and the more candles you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out say and then you blow that candle out too so easy so simple going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a hundred. The first candle, which is one Positivity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting. Candle ninety. 
to eight. Sixty-four. Candle. Sixty-four. 
here.
anxious thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down. It's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to, to relax deeply. And because you've made that decision, your body will just follow suit. Because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax. Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. And when you do give your permission, and you give the say-so, you can say, okay, it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally. Your body just follows. It's all right, like a breath of relief. Ah, oh, feel that bit more relax. That feeling at the end of a day of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair. Maybe you kick your shoes off and that. Ah. Oh, feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose you can just sit there for maybe an hour or two, and it feels blissful, and just by sitting down like that, your body knows it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you because it's a mindset and your mind will prepare to let go of everything and to just completely allow all of the stress of your body to evaporate and your 
tensions can just gradually vanish. It's almost like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and then see more and more of Stalian. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel is almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of the clock just unwinding. And you it's almost like you can see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that you choose to wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy, gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, deeper and you may find that the more relaxed you feel that your mind starts to wander maybe you seem to stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again. And that was just your mind drifting to sleep. Which is quite natural. Because sometimes when you're stressed and tense, we're not we may not actually be aware of what we need. What we physically or emotionally moment, but when we allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting them go, allowing them to drop onto the floor. touch with the feelings of such relaxation. It's, it feels so nice to be in touch with the calmness of the different body parts as they become looser and looser. and relaxation and 
just breathing out any excess feeling any tension any stress in every part of your body and mind and as you start to focus on your mind maybe you notice that things are come to a standstill or maybe just much much slower than before because your mind is not really needed in listening to my voice which allows your mind to relax just as deeply as your body synchronicity between the relaxation of your body and the relaxation of your mind lets you know you're feeling completely calm, loose and benefits for your body and your mind and your life to be able to let go of everything and to relax completely in all parts of your body and mind even your bones Muscles are relaxed. Even the skin that covers your body is relaxed. Every hair in your hair glistens. this healing relaxation and as you focus on the inside of your scalp right now as you can start to realize and notice the benefits of your brain Because they're no longer necessary in this moment, in this moment of deep relaxation and calmness, filling your brain with deep, calm 
yourself back to it. ever-increasing sensations of comfort that are spreading throughout your body. Relaxing each and every muscle of your body.
body scan focusing on firstly how you feel in your body not trying to change how you feel not trying to relax not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension just accepting observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are to notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment so I'm going to start off by focusing you to move your hands around, just maybe move your fingers a little bit, opening and closing your hands very gently, just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Focusing now on your feet. And if you can, just do kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Maybe turning your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. feel in this moment. Focusing now on your eyes. I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids. Maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes. The muscle changes in your eyes when you do close them. Maybe raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes. Perhaps squinting your eyes. scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with all aspects of how your eyes feel right now. Now focusing on your thighs. I'm going to just ask you to gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, noticing and observing how your thighs feel right now. Just 
just noticing the back of the neck, the muscles, and of course they lean to the side of your neck, they also lead to the top of your back, which lead to your shoulders, and as you focus slowly you're looking up, maybe moving your head down as if you were looking down, perhaps moving your head side to side like to the left, but only very slowly and very gently. force anything, it has to be very, very gentle, just so you can be more in touch with the feelings, with the sensations, the physical sensations of how the back of your neck feels right now. And as we now focus on the tops of the eyes, the parts of your biceps, Biceps are between your elbow and your shoulders. As you focus on those parts, the tops of your arms, and then try to just tense them, but very, very gently. in any pressure whatsoever in the arms, it's just so that you can gain more of a sense of how your upper arms are feeling in this moment. noticing as you gently, very gently and slowly tighten the muscles in your neck area. Notice Just above your forehead. Maybe you were able to tense these muscles in that area very, very gently and slowly. If that is difficult thing to do, maybe you can just move your body, pushing your stomach up, maybe moving a little bit to the side, using your hips, just so that you can get more in tune with how your
Muscles also move into your hip area, neck and 
physically able to do so, maybe you can bear in touch just merely with it, ever so slightly, very slowly, from side to side, just enough So gently open your mouth, not wide and not stretching, just very gently now, slowly open your mouth and closing your mouth. 
Everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant, but just gradually starting to, it's almost like time is stretching. It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. always the case and when you move your hand it might seem like it's one movement but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other and what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements starting to focus on How your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way, but starting to notice that your body 
begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations in your legs, whether pleasurable or not. Maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings. Just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. Not being particularly concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms. Instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings, all those different muscles and the skin. internal parts of your arms, the veins, the bones, just being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling. Maybe your left wrist also has its own individual physical sensation. What about your forearm? particular feeling that you could even give a name to. It may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, like it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. Of course, they're not. And when you focus on your left shoulder. right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, maybe tense the muscles gently, noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. Of course, 
establish that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, and I focused on my buttocks, and then I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched, very gently, just stretched a little bit. Even though I wasn't doing anything to try to stretch the lower back, it just seemed to happen. The feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. along that feel in your chest just noticing what sensations you Experiencing in your chest right now. And there's so much of the chest. Obviously, there's the collarbone leading to the chest, got the chest bone, you've got the muscles chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not that different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest. But at the side and underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back, as well as breast tissue which stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. feeling there is in your chest. So I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my my back. I guess the obvious reason would be because you know I'm breathing. In. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels. It feels okay. A little bit of pain in my right chest. A little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness, possibly. 
I don't know. Notice my shoulders are also wanting to flex for some reason. I think that's probably part of my upper back. connection between my shoulders and my upper back so I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back moving the shoulders backwards or up which then moves the I think it's the scapulas in the back Looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, and then you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes do that. There's no point doing it if there's a, an issue with a part, part of your body. You need to be gentle with yourself at all times when relaxing deeper. There's something there to it. yourself. And you notice your mind. How much has your mind slowed down since we started this recording? Peaceful is your mind right now. You have nothing to think about, just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation. At the very least, for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least, for your mind to slow down, as your body Your body. 
کرده Zeus here moving further away from the body and the mind, just leaving that there. Kind of like in a an escape pod in a spaceship, a movie, a space movie, you know. It's that little pod and it sends them <laughs> far away in the spaceship. seen and that feeling of those individual parts of the body that are relaxing one by one. listening to my voice because your mind started to imagine something different maybe started to almost move into some part of it and your memory started
happy. Like a warm blanket. Covering you. Gently. Keeping your body at rest. The perfect temperature. the slight movement of your mind being able to create just another small change in how you feel. Eight down to seven. Seven and seven down to six. And when you get to five, your mind will start to have a certain physical sensation. And I 
Christ like is of metal outside of your head, sucking the tension and stress from all your remaining feelings that you don't like, sucking them out through your skull. full of fresh air, a place where you can stretch, it's almost as if as you go down to four and three, your mind is expanding with this sensation there that you'd like to keep, a place that's safe where nothing can affect you at all, This is something that you can do yourself when you're on your own. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes. Close your eyes. Just count slowly.
coração.
sin and the physical sin. Having turned to God, I turn to you for one. And I will express intention to leave from the fingertips and the big toes. And as you focus on the fingertips, I'm going to feel a little bit tingly. This time, I'm going to feel relief of tension and stress and the anxiety that you might have. that you start to become more relaxed as I have in plenty and as you have now. Plenty. Now you can empty. Feel it expand as your body is melting and melting side to side. And your upper body and your back, your chest, stomach, legs, arms, hands, feet. Just noticing. Focus. 
think I can do things with arms and this stuff as well. Not sure if I'm gonna get arms. So I don't know where my arms go. It's almost as if you belong in my obscure nothing. Focusing on that area, because that's the area that I need to release tension and stress from my mind. Because your mind is in your mind, and any tension that you may have had with your mind in your face, in your neck, in your jaw, in your arms, in your forehead, and in your stomach. There needs to be any tension within your heart area.
yourself some space to breathe and listen to it. Just sit and let it be. Just to sit and connect to the inner presence or the sounds of our inner self. We don't need to think about our inner self. Because this is your time to let go. This is your space to enjoy being deeply relaxed, peaceful in your I'd like you to make up your mind for the day coming up to you. And I want to explore that with you, what it feels like when you actually decide for your day coming up to you. Not forcing yourself, but giving yourself that. I guess it is a command really, isn't it? When you're telling yourself that. And I'll get into a bit further on that. But only you can really tell yourself in that way. You can't have someone else saying to you, no, relax. Relax. Unless you're gentle, but you can't, someone else can't really have the same, the same kind of influence or power that you have over your own physicality, over how you feel. Because when you say, Test it out. There's no little test, a few little tests along the way, and you can get more of an idea of the thoughts, the positive thoughts that you could have in creating a sense of comfort and relaxation in your body and your mind. And that could be just by you telling yourself. Someone, and 
the start there, just the slightest of left turns. The brakes on the hand will just tell your hand to relax. So just say, relax, and just focus on your breaths. You could say, my hands are light, or I want my hands to relax. And I think if you actually do it directly, Focusing and imagining that your hands can hear it this time around because they're all ears at the moment in your head. So talking to your hands and just say, relax. Focus on your eyes and tell your eyes to relax. So just say in the same word, relax. And find the right tone for you. You know, I might say, relax. But you, you might say, relax. Or, relax. You know, you, you might say it differently to yourself. That's important for you, so they will feel right for you. So just tell your eyes to relax whilst focusing on your eyes, your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, the eyebrows, and just tell your eyes directly. Get yourself calm. Sometimes you may feel that you need a bit more time for the different parts to relax. You know, to rest up, talk, and calm. And maybe those parts need to come out fully. And what would happen is that you just get a bit of relax in the world. I noticed is when I started focusing on this, I actually almost did find that it got worse before I got better, you know, or that I felt a bit more tension growing in my eyes and then disappearing. So I think what that was really was just me becoming more aware of the tension that was already there. Focusing on that tension, you know, and just really acknowledging it or you know, really actually feeling it through them. have got a certain kind of magic about them, it's like a buzzing effect, it's a kind of feeling, it's kind of energy that they have, and you might find it helps you feel relaxed, and you might feel relaxed. focus on the back of the neck. That's a part that often, um, well for me, I would think is a bit more about myself. You know, I can get quite a, a standard pace when I'm tension and something at home. So, and I'm, I'm doing it, I 
sa imahe mo ang aking paa sa mga kalangyan sa lupa ng Egypto. At ikaw yung